Are you ready? For El Paso's first and longest running high school football show, this is the Borderland Blitz. Welcome, everybody, to the Borderland Blitz. It is so great to have you with us. It is the longest-running high school football show in the area. It is the season premiere of the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Integrity Kia. I'm Danny Mata. He is way too tall. That, but they also call me Luke Linden. But, hey, there's nothing quite like the first show of the season. We've got a great show coming your way on opening night. So, first and foremost, let's take a look at our starting lineup. Our game of the week features Cano Teal in its first game since its historic run back in 2014. Take on Franklin in the Cougars' new den. We've also got our first War of the Week, and I really have no shame in saying that's probably my favorite segment of the show. Brittany Carlock will join us as the gals from El Dorado and Eastlake go head to head. And Jeff Woodruff makes his coaching debut with the Andrus Eagles, while Julio Lopez, the youngest head coach in 11 man UIL football, coaches his first game with the Eastwood Troopers. And later, we'll introduce you to our newest prize for our play of the week Punch. And pie. That's coming up on the season premiere of the Borderland Blitz. I've been dying to know this. Does that come with Alamode? Did you? You can't put the Alamode there. I, I didn't say Alamode. I just said punch and pie. See, now you 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 made it bigger, so now people are gonna be disappointed. Thanks. Maybe maybe whipped cream. Who knows? But anyways, <laughs> let's get back to football. We've got some impressive storylines for our game of the week. After coming the first 11-man El Paso team to reach the state semis, the Canada Two Eagles enter this season with a target on their backs. While the Franklin uh, Cougars come in as the defending 1-6A champs, but they have to replace star quarterback Baylor Romney, who went to Nevada, and Nick Bingham, who is off to Texas State. Let's go to Franklin High School for our Integrity Kia Game of the Week. And the Cougars were hosting just their second game in the new stadium. Hey, how you doing? First quarter, Brandon Mueller finds Gunnar Romney for the 46-yard touchdown. And just like that, it is seven to nothing, Franklin. Who says they're not going to be able to score without Baylor Romney and Bingham and all those guys? The crowd is loving it. What a game this is. But Canateo will not be denied. It's Daniel Alvarez, the quarterback keeper from five yards out. That ties the game at seven. Now, because of all of the lightning, we don't have as extensive highlights as we would like to have for you because the lightning delayed everything, and we become victims of that too. Franklin ends up winning on a blocked field goal at the end of the game. 21 to 20 is your final score. And there you see it. Again, a blocked field goal at the end of the game. So a thrilling finish. But again, we'd like to show you that, but we're, you know, only the, so much the, you can do. Only so much you can do when the lightning, lightning hits, and, and it, it has all kinds of uh, craziness that that we become victims of. So it's it, it's it's not great, but hey, there you go, Franklin and Canateo, and what a great season for both these teams. Uh, 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 they're going to have a great season, mm -hmm. and you know that for Canateo, they show they can still play with the best, the best in six A. Field goal. I know. And the funny thing was, they actually missed the first field goal wide right, right but there was a, right. a called timeout, which yep. iced the kicker, and then all that happened. drama for your game of the week. There you exactly. go, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, they were the first two teams. Featured on our two a days preseason series, which you can still find, by the way, on our website, kvia.com, Onyate and Centennial. Onyate looking to prove how tough they are despite graduating 30 seniors. Meanwhile, Centennial is the number one team in the Class 5A preseason rankings. So let's go to the Field of Dreams, the entire Las Cruces area. They don't mess around, they're a tough bunch. First quarter, Onyate quarterback Tony Hadada right here with the pass to Joe Van. And he gets it for six, but Centennial. They would strike back. QB Dante Lopez right here to Bryce Rewalt. Yes, sir. Centennial goes up 14 to 7, and then later, Lopez and Rewalt. Well, they say, not once, let's do it twice. They hook up again right here. A beautiful play for another touchdown. Centennial takes this game 36 to 28, the final. All right, well, before we head to the, back to the gridiron, I just want to say, Onyate, they lost all those guys, but hey, yep. they, they play very well against yep. a very good Centennial team. But it is time to turn our attention to the debut of the War of the Week. Yes, like I said earlier, this may be my favorite part of the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. The cheerleaders are back. The rope is back. And this season, we have a new host for the War of the Week, Brittany Carlock. Take it away. What's up, guys? I'm Brittany Carlock here with your first War of the Week, and kicking it off this year, we have the El Dorado Aztecs <laughs> and the East Lake Falcons. <laughs> All right, ladies, it's gonna be on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three, go! <laughs> I 
Oh my goodness, the anticipation. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, you forth. see me, I'm like, Back come on, come forth. on, come on. <laughs> that was quite the I've debut. never seen that before. I've heard right. about it. I, I, that's the first time I've ever actually seen that. It is awesome. <laughs> well done, Brittany. And, and she's going to be a great host for mm -hmm. that. It, it's, we got, we got many more to come. That's, and that's why it's my favorite segment. <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> All right, well, let's get back to tonight's games. We've got a little bit of history for you in the making. Yeah, that's right. Julio Lopez leads his Eastwood team against Chapin. And for Coach Lopez, he enters his first game as the youngest head coach in all of Texas 11-man UIL football. So let's go to the highlights. There is Eastwood checking into this thing, hosting again Chapin. And there is Coach Lopez. All right, so everything gets started right here with Mark Torres. A 31-yard touchdown pass to Richie Rodriguez, 7-0. Eastwood, and don't think that those two are done. Of course, Julio Lopez, he's loving it. But Chapin, that was a really good game. Matt Castillo. That is a six yard touchdown pass from Brandon Bullet. It's seven to six, two point try failed. But here we go, Chapin's Brandon Bullet on fourth down. He's going to take off with this. He actually confused our camera man, but he gets in. It's now 12 to seven. But for Eastwood, they would not be denied. It's Mark Torres again, looking again for Richie Rodriguez. How about this throw? And how about that <laughs> by Richie Rodriguez? 22 yards for the touchdown. And it is Eastwood who goes on to win the game 19 to 12. Your final score, they win in Julio Lopez's debut. Not only is that a great catch, but what a great catch to win on for the. Julio Lopez. Oh, you just look at, I mean, just that, the throw and the catch, everything. They're going to be so good. They got a lot of talent on that team. Uh -huh. El Dorado is favored to win that district, but hey, Eastwood's got a lot of players. I'm telling yep, you, this is going to be a fun race to watch. All right, well, Andrus also debuts uh, a new head coach, former UTEP assistant Jeff Woodruff. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but he won a national championship with the University of Washington as an assistant. So he's a great get for the program, although. It does come with some challenges. <laughs> it does. It does. The biggest challenge is that he was hired just six weeks ago. Six so weeks. we had a tough task getting his team adjusted to a new system and a new style in such a short period of time. And when you think about it, facing Coronado, that's, that's not really a cakewalk either. So, hey, let's go to Andrus. The Eagles coming off a 10-3 and season. Coronado was just 5-5 five and five last year. Early in the second quarter, Jonathan Milan right here will take the handoff cuts inside then outside. He goes, takes to the end zone for an easy score. They go up seven to nothing. And after that touchdown, get this, Coronado kicking off to Andrus. They muff the kick, and Coronado recovers it in perfect field position. So I think you know what's coming next. On the ensuing drive, who else then? Milan again with the handoff. His second touchdown of the night. They go up 13 to zero, and Coronado goes on to win this one easily, 20 to six. So last year was a disappointing one for Las Cruces. They just went 6-6 six and six while the team is not making excuses. Injuries did play a big part in that. They certainly did. The biggest injury was Cameron Miller's knee, but he's back healthy, and his dad, Coach Jim Miller, are chasing another title. Now, you know that Cam Miller would like to win another one with his dad, and here is Montwood, and they've got a lot of stuff they got to work on. But uh, this, is, this was an impressive debut for, for Montwood. You see right here with a touchdown pass. Now, this is early on in the game. Now, remember... We started this game at about 4 o'clock, so right now they're up 7 to nothing, and it's only going to get a little bit worse. The Cisneros yeah. fires his second touchdown pass of the game. It's now 13 to nothing, but Las Cruces comes back. Here's Cameron Miller. This is what they were missing last year with the long ball and the touchdown pass, and Las Cruces is back in this game, but this game was called because of the lightning, and it ends with a 20 to 14 victory for Montwood. That is an absolutely impressive win right there uh, for, for Montwood because when you talk about who they're having to face, mm -hmm. that is that is as tough a matchup as you're going to get. So very, very, very impressive for Montwood to get that win. I know it was cut short about 309 the third quarter when they called it, but very impressive because yeah. Montwood struggled so much and last they, year. Exactly. But look at the seven mm -hmm. on seven. State seven on seven yep. tournament. They won the Notre Dame tournament. They come out beat Las Cruces. This is a different Montwood team than a year ago. No, exactly. A lot of fun and to watch. We do not have the Carlsbad America's highlight at, at this exact moment, but we will continue moving. Let's go ahead to Austin and Bel Air if we can get those highlights up there for you. We do have those highlight sets. As you can see, the band is getting ready. 
All right, yeah, and here uh, for Bel Air, this is Jesus Contreras, a 12 yard touchdown pass to Jamil Gentry. But Bel Air was absolutely all over the place today. They knock off Austin 48 to nothing. Your final score, rough night for Austin. That one highlight shows the story for you. And let's fast forward to Irvin versus Parkland, if we can get that highlight up there for you. That was also a pretty good one. Parkland hosting the Irvin Rockets. The Rockets end of the season just one win shy of the playoffs. So we began late third quarter. Malik DeQueer takes the handoff. He cuts inside, then cuts outside. You have to get past the defender right here. He does just that, stays in bounds for six points. They go up and take a 20 to nothing score. The Rockets trying to get something going. And who else than Khalil Smith taking the handoff, jumps inside for the touchdown. They close the gap 20 to six, but that's really all they can muster out as Parkland beats the Rockets 27 to 14. So we've decided, and it makes sense, the Borderland Blitz is nothing without you. And nowadays, with social media, it's easier for all of you to get closer to all of the action. And that is why our social media director, Adrian Medina, has returned for another season on the Blitz. He's been tracking Facebook, he's been tracking <laughs> Twitter and Instagram, taking a look at what you've been posting. Adrian! What's going on, man? Hey, guys, I'm excited. Kenny Teal lost last year to Franklin. They lost again today. They might make another state run, but that's just for the books, right? I want you guys to go right now, go on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, post your pictures from tonight using hashtag Borderland Blitz. Make sure we show them tonight. Also, go to our website, go to our Facebook page on your phone or on your desktop, and you can enter right now to win one of four pizzas that we're giving away tonight from Peter Piper Pizza. Don't forget, guys, do it now. We will give away the, the pizzas later on this, after, this evening. So maybe Thanks, guys. We, maybe we could win one. We maybe? should call in. I can, I can Instagram, Facebook, some I, stuff. I, I do. Is that, is that allowed? Is that against the rules? It's right? not against the rules, right? No, I mean, no it's not against the rules, we, but I, I know who's going to win. I so take a selfie right here uh, and do this, man. Come on. No? <laughs> I don't know All right, I fine. All right, well, we're just getting started right here on the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Integrity Kia. After the break, we'll tell you how Del Valle fared against Gaston without star quarterback Steve Montez. Of course, he's now suiting up for the Pac 12 in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And two teams trying to get back on the winning track after a disappointing 2014 season. Adrian Ochoa will join us with the highlights from the Hanks Jefferson game. That's coming up in the next few minutes. Stay with us. One, two, one, two, welcome.
All right, welcome back to the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Integrity Kia. I'm Danny Mata, alongside Luke Lidden. And now it is time to bring in another member of our team, and he's no stranger to the Blitz. Adrian Ochoa was at a pretty good game over in South Central El Paso. Adrian, what do you got for us? Yeah, well, what's, what's up, guys? Glad to be back for another season here on the Blitz. And tonight I had a chance to check in on two teams that would like nothing more than to erase the 2014 season from their memory. The Jefferson Silver Foxes only had two wins last season. The Hanks Knights finished dead even with a disappointing 5-5. Five and five record. So who's on the right track for a rebound? Let's head on down to Labui. First though, we have to suffer through a 30-minute weather delay. The teams warmed up. The cheerleaders brushed up on some backflips while some fans chowed down on some kettle corn. Yum. But once the crowd cleared, it was time to hit the field. First quarter. Check out the toughness here from Hank's QB, Nick Reyes. He can't find anybody. Decides to take it himself. And then his helmet would get yanked off in the process. That would draw a face mask penalty later in the drive. Hanks would attempt a field goal from 17 yards out. The kick obviously is bad. Then Jefferson's Ray Vela will catch it in the end zone. Tries to make something happen. Just go down, Ray. It's not worth it. Just go down. He does into the end zone. Jefferson then pinned inside the 10. Hand off to Vela here. But the Hanks defense is having none of it. He gets stuffed. He's ruled down at the two. Then we move on to the second quarter now. Hanks from 18 yards out. Play action. Reyes will find Randy Thomas, who brushes off the defender and then just takes it in himself for six. Hanks goes up seven to nothing at this point, and this one was a tight one up until the end. But the Knights pull it off 28 to 21, the final. Well, next week, Jefferson hits the road to Riverside, while Hanks will play host to former district foe, the Socorro Bulldogs. Guys, I'll send it back to you, but quickly, I want to say, you know, Luke and I were on the Blitz last season. Danny, this is your first year on the show, so I want to officially welcome you to the team and all the chaos here. All Glad to chaos. have you on board, my friend. Hey, thank you so much, Adrian. It's great to be a part of it. I will tell you, I had no idea about the chaos. I really did. We almost had a heart attack, actually, before the show began. But hey, we didn't. We're alive. We are it's alive. It's going well. We're enjoying it. You're a little more alive than I am. All right, okay, well, let's move along. Del Valle had a tough one against Gaston in his first game of the post Diva Montez era. But these guys still think they're going to be pretty good. And they've got a great defense. They say they're a more complete team this year. All right, so let's go over to New Mexico. And this right here is Sergio Ramos fumbles. Davaya recovers, and it's cut by Christian uh, Vil uh, Vilaba. And then later, Del Valle on the attack. It's uh, Vilaba. It takes a fall in the end zone. It makes it seven to nothing. All right, he right here. That's the seven nothing play right there. Great pass right there. And just like that again, seven nothing. Del Valle. All right, and we got more stuff coming up for you here as we have now Jason Morales, and Morales gets in for the other touchdown. Del Valle was absolutely all over Gaston in this ball game. Your final score, 34-7, to Del Valle. No Montez, so far so good? Yeah, not bad. I mean, when you, when you figure all the things that they had to, that they had to overcome, I mean, it was really very good to see them go out there and beat Gadsden on the road. And I, I don't care, you know, you know previous, previous records doesn't matter. Anyway. All right, one of the things about being the new guy in town is you learn a lot. I've learned that El Paso High School is apparently the most haunted high school in the country, which means I will not be camping out there anytime soon. Granted, they try to be as consistent as possible. They were, excuse me, they're looking to strike some fear into the hearts of the Lions. We've got Lions and Tigers. Oh, my. Indeed. Let's head out to Clint. El Paso coming off a 500 season and missed the playoffs while Clint was a playoff team just a year ago. And right here, Trey Wolf scrambles. The quarterbacks, and then look at this. He goes 67 yards for the touchdown. They take the seven to nothing lead, and that—that's quite the play, if you ask me. And we actually do not have the score at this point right now, but there also is the extra point. And we are running out of time, so we will be right back. And the 13 to six is actually your final El Paso beating Clint, and we will be right back after this break.
All right, welcome back to the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Integrity Kia. I'm Danny Mata. And I am Luke Lidden, Bowie and Fabens. They were both playoff teams a season ago, and both of them have a lot of players back. 13 for Bowie and 11 for Fabens. So, hey, let's head out to Fabens. And we begin in the first quarter, and there are a lot of turnovers right here, and overthrown by an interception by Bowie, Jairo Mendoza, putting them in good scoring position. And the fast forward, though, to the second quarter. Right here, Bowie's Dominique Johnson gets in for the seven points, and Bowie would go on to win this one against Fabens, 14 to nothing. And now we fast forward to Horizon and Socorro, and last year was rough. It was rough for both of them, and really, neither Socorro hasn't made the playoffs since 2002. But it's a new season; both teams have a chance to right the ship and get back into the playoffs. Now. They did not supply the rosters to the guys up in the press box, so no one really had their names. They're not uploaded online, so we're going to do what everyone else was doing. Here's number 12, and that one is picked off by, well, number 12. And that's intercepted and run back. So you get an idea of what we were dealing with. So now uh, Horizon is on the attack. And off the play fake, that pass is, well, intercepted the other way. So you get an idea of what this game was like. On the return, he goes all the way back for the uh, pick six, the long pick six, six nothing, Socorro. And Socorro, with that new stadium, is still so young, they go on to win this game. 12 to 8, your final score. And let's keep this thing rolling. Let's go to the sack. Carlsbad taking on America's. America's went 5 and 6 last year, but hey, it's a new season. And they've got new goals. New so goals. We'll so see let's, what goes on right here. Let's get to it. Carlsbad. Had a pretty good opening drive. Jonah Levia right here with the quarterback keeper. He runs the ball, not 10, 20, 30. He goes 70 yards for the touchdown. He's got to be breathing heavy after that play. And America's, though, they say anything you can do, I can do better. America's quarterback, Eric Foster, also with the quarterback keeper, and he runs it 40 yards. Whoop, jumps outside. He just gets into the end zone. A lot of quarterback playing this one. I like it. All right, and, and, uh, right, and the there final score, 32 to 13, America is with the win over Carlsbad. All right, let's, take, let's check back in with Adrian Medina. Adrian, what do you got for us? Hey, guys, we've been getting a lot of photos, actually. Uh, if you guys can see behind me, we'll take it up full screen. Uh, we've been asking all night for your pictures, and you guys have been delivering. We got some pictures tonight from Lily Montez over there at, uh, it looks like, a, a EPISD over in Franklin. We also got something from uh, the Trailblazers. Uh, Betty sent one. Andrews High School sent us some. Uh, great shots, guys. If you guys want your photos on, don't forget, hashtag Borderland Blitz. Here's one Steve Onresta from the Franklin Canetillo game. Franklin did beat Canetillo there. Elizabeth Rios sent us a picture of Isaac Pineda of, of uh, Eastwood High School. Uh, Daniel Carrera sent him in, in a group shot there of him and his buds. And then Lorraine Tarango sent one of the Hanks. Hanks Knights. Uh, all righty, guys. Our winners for tonight, uh, we have, uh, oh man, I messed up my screen here. Uh, we have four winners for tonight. Our winners are Martin Moncada, 79936, Cesar Lucero, 79936, Veronica Garcia of 79912, and Teresa Mendoza of 79925. Congratulations, guys. We'll be contacting you on Monday for those free pizzas. Nice. I love it. I wish I could have won some, uh, some pizza. But hey, we got more coming for you on the Borderland Blitz. Stay with us. We'll, we'll be right back. back in just a couple minutes, okay? <laughs>
All right, welcome back to the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Integrity Kia. Here's some scores from the night in case you missed anything. Franklin over Cantillo, 21-20. Going out over Andrews, 20-6. Uh, Eastwood knocks off Chapin, 19-12. America knocks off Carlsbad, 32-13. Montwood, impressive win over Las Cruces, 20-14. Bel Air, 48-0 all over uh, Austin. And Del Valle takes care of Gaston, 34-7. And we see here Hanks beating Jefferson 28 to 21. East Lake, not a chance against El Dorado. As El Dorado takes the win 70 to 49. Socorro with the win 12 to 8 over Horizon. Parkland beating out Irvin 27 to 14. We are still working on that Chaparral Riverside score, so we apologize for that. East Leta Indians beating Mountain View 14 to 6, and El Paso over Clint 12 to 6. All right, more scores. Uh, Bowie knocks off Havens 14 to nothing. Uh, San Elizario, this was again yesterday, as was the El Dorado game, all over Santa Teresa, 33 to six. Uh, Española over Cathedral, 20 to 14. Centennial and Yate, a good one. Centennial wins 36 to 28. Mayfield and uh, Hobbs, that game is actually now tied at 34. We, that score is not updated, and they're in their second weather delay, so it could end as a tie. Anthony all over Mesilla Valley Christian, 38 to nothing. All right, guys, so that about wraps it up it for does. our first edition of The Blitz. I promise we talk about punch and pie before we got out of here. Uh, boy, it's something I've been doing since my days in Houston. Mm -hmm. I get a big old thing of punch and some pie, and our player of the week is going to get punch and pie. Don't say I don't know what i Don't say Whipped cream instead. Okay, fine, Wh whatever. Maybe. Get your own whipped cream, but hey, we got you. Punch and pie. We'll go to the winners every single week, our player of the week. And again, if we miss something in our highlights, because that happens sometimes, but you got it on cell phone video, send you it. can send it to yep. us, and it can totally be nominated for player of the week. I promise you. So get that to us. We'll have the punch and the pie, and we should have a great season. Season here on the Borderland Blitz. We are excited to sh share this with you. Dan and I are excited to be here from Borderland Blitz. This wraps up week one. We got many more weeks of football to come, and we are very excited to be here on the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Integrity Key. I'm just going to say real quick, what's the present team of the day for me? Motley. How about you? I agree. El Dorado. El Dorado. Oh, yeah, El Dorado. Dorado. 70 points in yeah. three quarters. You can't go <laughs> on with that one. I got I to gotta love Motley, though. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Borderland Blitz. I'm Danny Mata. He's way too tall. And we will see you next time. Have a good night.